Hello, Maria? Today I'm making Maria cookie icebox cake. I love Maria cookies. They're my childhood favorite cookies. I'm layering this with Latinx flavors like dulce de leche, nutmeg, clove, and cinnamon. And of course, my all-time favorite, Maria cookies. For those of you who don't know what Maria cookies are, typically named Galletas Maria, they are round, thin, delicious cookies that we have with our cafecito in the morning. What you think of graham crackers in the US, Maria cookies are to Latin America. I'm gonna show you why these are the best of the best. Mmm. So today we're gonna have four cups of cream. I only have a two cup measurement, so I'm gonna refill this. We're gonna show you that delicious whipped cream and how to make this without using a mixer. <gasps> without using a mixer? Yes, without using a mixer. I'm gonna take a little bit of vanilla bean paste, one cup of powdered sugar, here I have the eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg and an eighth of a teaspoon of clove, both ground. And then we have a half of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm adding these spices because in my culture, in the Dominican Republic, you have a lot of warm spices. It just feels like a warm hug. So don't skip out on these steps. Now we have our salt. We're gonna do a few pinches of salt here. So typically when you make whipped cream, you're thinking about whisks, you're thinking about mixers, and I just don't have the bandwidth for that. Imagine having to lug my mixer every time that I have to make whipped cream. So we're using our immersion blender. Usually when you're making whipped cream, all you need is agitation, and this bad boy provides all the agitation. It's gonna be stressed. This whipped cream, stressed. Let's make some whipped cream. While you're mixing this, you're gonna keep this blender in motion and moving, and you're gonna get all the agitation you need to make beautiful, silky whipped cream. And if you see that you have some sugar clumps in there, don't be afraid to just get in there and just move them. They're a little stubborn sometimes. And as you can see, we've achieved stiff peaks with our immersion blender. Amazing. So now that our whipped cream is ready, we're gonna put this back in the fridge while we make our Maria cookie crumble. I'm gonna take a few of the cookies. If I need a little more, I'll make more crumble later. But I especially like to do this with the broken pieces of Maria cookie. We're gonna use a small little food processor and we're just gonna take maybe like 10 cookies, give or take. This is gonna get a little loud. And just put this in the bowl. So we're gonna put our Maria cookies to the side and we're gonna get the main event, our nine inch springform pan. So as we're gonna use this pan, we're gonna spray a little bit of pan spray on there and then we're gonna layer some plastic wrap. With plastic wrap, you know the struggle is real, so <laughs> just keep on pressing it down. We're gonna go in with another piece of plastic wrap to kinda get this side and then you'll see that once it's ready, it'll kind of cover all of the sides of your nine inch pan. So now we have our piping bag with a round tip. I have a measuring cup that I'm using as a way to stabilize my piping bag. So I'm gonna grab my cream. It's smooth, it's creamy. You're never gonna make whipped cream another way because this is just a uh, chef's kiss. We're gonna lift it up so that it makes another cone to get some more of our whipped cream in there. Now we have our Maria cookies. First, you're gonna take the first round. I like to put the uh, textured side down as opposed to the smooth side down. It's personal preference. I don't think it makes it taste better, but when you flip the cake, you're gonna see this design, so I like to see it when we flip this cake. So I took one in the middle and now I'm gonna make a perimeter, making sure that I go all the way to the edge of the pan with my cookies. 
fact, when I was growing up in the Bronx, we would use the few dollars that our parents would give us to go to the bodega after school and Maria cookies were sold in like 25 cent and 50 cent packs. It's like a perfect way to like get filled up after school without wasting all of your dollars because you need to make sure that you have enough money for candy, right? I'm sprinkling some of the Maria cookie crumble into the nooks and crannies so that when our cream gets in there, it doesn't kind of like fall through and get stuck. Our whipped cream. So we're gonna go and we're going to pipe around the edge, just a nice smooth layer, get a little bit of the center. And this is our first layer. We're gonna use an offset spatula and we're just gonna get it to be a little smoother so that our next layer of cookies is just going to fit perfectly on this surface. So we're gonna repeat this process. I think now is a great time to see me in fast motion because this is a long process. Be back. So I have a little friend. It's a bodega cat named Misu. And this kitty is the staple of all bodegas and corner stores in New York City. Misu is also a word that we use in the Dominican Republic to call any cat. I, they're all Misu. They all have the same name. So Misu, 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 come here and introduce yourself. <laughs> So now we're going to go in with our last layer of Maria cookie crumble. And now we are going to spread it out. This is gonna make a perfect crumble. I'm gonna put this in the fridge and it's gonna set for a few hours or overnight if I can wait. I'm gonna start setting up our garnish. We have lovely edible flowers, dulce de leche, and then we have our strawberries that I'm gonna quarter and I'm gonna half. So, Technically, with icebox cakes, you can make it whatever flavor you want. Today, I'm using dulce de leche, I'm using strawberries, and have fun with this. Whatever you have on hand in the house is what you should use. So, I'm gonna grab my icebox cake. I'm super nervous because unmolding things is so scary. So, here we have our Icebox cake. My heart is going pitter patter, pitter patter. I'm so scared, oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I just know that whenever you're unmolding something, it's always chaotic. So I'm gonna sustain it and flip it. That's not the hard part, guys. All right, we're gonna move this guy so that it falls perfectly in our gap. <gasps> I think I, I think I made it. So we're gonna carefully try to peel back our plastic wrap. Ta-da! We did it, we made it. Yes, Misu, we did it. High five. So now we're gonna put our dulce de leche on top and just make it cute, make a little swirl if you have an offset, which I don't, I'll be right back. So you're gonna take your offset and you're just gonna smooth this out. I'm gonna just make sure that it goes around, but I'm, I don't wanna push it all the way to the edge. Give it a little swirl action. <gasps> so delicious. Then we're gonna use our berries and put it around. So just layer your strawberries organically, however you see fit. And now we're gonna just do some edible flowers wherever you see a natural gap in your dulce de leche. I think Miso thinks I did a good job. What do you think, Miso? Okay guys, so let's cut into this and let's give this a try and see if this is as good as I think it's gonna be. I'm so excited. I wish you were here with me. It smells delicious. The dulce de leche is tantalizing and the flowers are just the perfect touch. So we're gonna dig in. Oh, so good, oh my gosh. So remember, if you're gonna try this at home, you could try it with Maria cookies. You could try it with whatever cookie that you fancy, but I really recommend this cookie. Bye.